perde tempo escolhendo uma roupa Porque no fim eu sei que vou tirar Fala tchau pro seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um vulcão Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa ficou mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço Colarinha dos amassos, amassos, amassos Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço Seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um vulcão Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa fica mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. From our compound, from the West Coast to the East Coast, to worldwide, both on the internet and terrestrial radio, you're listening to Gary Anderson on Night Dreams Talk Radio. After Dark. And it is After Dark. Well, James and Sam, are you guys still there? We're still there. You know, I'm not trying to be the bad guy here. I'm just trying to be the bad guy from the standpoint of getting people to think. You know, I I do think we need to get a different and look at your Bigfoot in a different way than we have been looking at it. I I, I really think that if you're going to go out looking for Bigfoot, be it as a hobby or or trying to take it really seriously, you want to get the, the best proof as you can. So, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to scoop up a little bit of soil samples and a footprint uh, because evidently Bigfoot don't wear shoes. And, you know, maybe we can get some more proof that they exist. And that's what we need is some uh, proof. Now, to go out and kill one, you know, I hate to say it, but in a situation, how many years have they been talking about Bigfoot, you know, or the abominable snowman, depending on where you live in the world? You know, I, I think we do need to have some type of serious proof where we have closure. So we we have proof the same way, like with aliens and stuff like that. I mean, we got to have some proof and we got to have closure. And I think, you know, uh, it, the way it's going is just going around circles over and over again yeah people say they saw bigfoot i say the same thing sam says the same thing but that doesn't mean anything to the guy living down the end of the street yeah well i'm telling you <laughs> actually it's good to play devil's advocate about the whole thing you know with bigfoot um as far as uh, proving its existence um yeah i'm i'm a little bit at a loss of words about that particular part, but uh, I, if you're going to have a Bigfoot that's actually going to, I'd rather not have it seen it killed as much as if someone's going to go down that path, it's just something, some Bigfoot that, act, that accidentally died or something like that, or had gotten into possession of a human. I suppose that would be more of the humane thing to do, but I am not, I'm definitely not a kill Bigfoot advocate at all. I mean, seriously, it's, it's just something goes against my grain totally, you know, Well, that, and that's nothing wrong with that. I mean, would I like to see a Bigfoot killed? No, I would not. 
But I think we need some type of closure. And what's the odds are of going out and seeing a Bigfoot and shoot it with a 30 odd six? I mean, come on. The odds are very slim because that's just not going to happen. Uh, but again, who knows how many hunters have gone out hunting out there and maybe a Bigfoot off the hunter. Think about that one. Now, do they have any compassion for the hunter that they may be offed? No. I mean, seriously, well, half my family, Sam, are with the Muckleshoot and another Indian tribe. Okay? I have talked to uh-huh. the medicine man of the one tribe, uh, and I talked to the medicine woman of the other tribe. And they have, you know, told me so many stories about Bigfoot. And none of them has been where Bigfoot was friendly towards them and and tried helping with them. It was always that they were a, a rival. But they did one thing, you know, the, the like the, the squaws would be taking care of the babies down at the, the river, washing their clothes. And a bunch of Bigfoot would come running through, snatch up a, a couple of the babies or the, a squaw or two. And run off, and then, you know, they find the remains later of the, the, the babies or the squaws. It tells me that they were, they were cannibal, and that is scary. And I heard story after story of that. Both tribes, the Muckleshoot tribe and the uh, Nisqually tribe. So, I mean, come on. I, it, it makes you wonder, you know, that these Bigfoot that give off orbs and friendly. Yeah, there could be some Bigfoot out there that are used to humans. The same way there's other animals that get used to humans and they kind of live by them. But if you're out in an area where they're not used to humans, you might be just a threat to them or a piece of meat to them. Like a, a deer is to a hunter that's going to bring it home and make beef jerky out of it. That's yeah. the same way with the Quinault uh, Indian Reservation, you know, over on the uh, ocean, uh, north of ocean shores or the Pacific, the Pacific coast side of, of the Olympic Peninsula. And there are stories with, with their tribe as well about the, the Bigfoots that are just north of there. And, um, so, you, you know, they, you know, there's certain things about the salmon. They do eat the salmon when it runs through there, but you're right. It's just they, they respect their boundaries. They, there's no interaction, you know, between the, um, the tribes as far as the Bigfoot and the, the tribe itself except for maybe gifting the, the salmon, but they try to just stay away from, you know, they don't bother them. And, and, and I think I've, I've heard the same thing. It's just when I've talked to several Indian, uh, I mean, a native, I'm going to say, uh, uh, sorry. Amer- American to natives, American right natives, native American. Yeah. Uh, native Americans. Uh, they all seem to have this negative connotation about trying to, uh, you know, as far as get, get along with them and all that. And, to, to stay away or else some bad curse will come upon you. I know that's true. They, there's a big belief in little people for your, for that same reason. But uh, every story that I've seen to come across uh, from a Native American standpoint indicates that uh, if, if you interact with them or you bother them, then some bad consequences will happen to you or befall you. So, you know, there, I understand the whole negative connotation thing on the whole realm of cryptid with with especially the native americans well yeah i mean but who would else would know more that they they lived in the woods before us white men came over and took you know their their forests away from them their places to live away from them again the one tribe you just mentioned my granddaughter because i i tell you my family kind of like went off every which way it has actually three tribes uh in my family i have eight kids and my grandkids are, you know, they're the ones that are, uh, have, they're, you know, mixed, uh, American native and whatever I am. And, uh, you know, I got to know the, their tribe alters, uh, elders and stuff. And this Bigfoot thing has really puzzled me for many years. And, you know, I, when you hear what their stories are and then you hear other people's stories, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I just don't think that every Bigfoot out there gives off warm orbs and sends off, you know, love and peace to people. I think, again, just like anything, if you're in an area 
and they adapt to you is one thing. But if you're in an area where they're not used to a human, then you're you're a threat to them. And if you're a threat to them, just like anybody else, what are they going to do? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'd be the first one. That, well, I've talked about this before where, you know, I don't feel that everything you come across out there give you the warm and fuzzy feeling. I only, I, I think it's just, just like humans. It's just there's going to be certain ones that have a good trait as far as dealing with uh a select group of humans, not all of them, just maybe a certain group of them that are benign. But then there's others. I I don't trust the intentions sometimes when I go to a different area. And I had a bad feeling, you know, when I went to the other part of the uh, south of uh, Mount St. Helens. I could feel that stuff. I could feel it, you know, coming on. Like, I don't, I don't like the feeling just standing in this part of the woods alone. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I do think there's there's things out there. And then again, you got this whole whole idea that it's just not Bigfoot out there that looks like a Bigfoot. There are probably other beings and creatures that are similar to Bigfoot, or just they just happen to be different species, but might be the same size, a little bit higher or or taller or, or smaller than a Bigfoot. That might be just totally cannibal or totally uh, uh, hateful towards humans. You don't know. I mean, you know, you were talking about proof of Bigfoot. That It's just everybody centers on Bigfoot. But you don't know all the different things out there. There's the Mothman. There's all the other kind of what people would normally turn the monsters out there that are anything larger than a human that are out there that nobody knows about or there's no so-called proof for those either. So it's it's a mixed bag of uh, uh ideas about what these things are and you know you have to err to the side of caution i think you really got to be cautious because you just cannot make assumptions about anything you have to trust your senses you have especially if you're in the same area all the time that that's the only level of comfort you can have but you go to a strange place you don't know what to expect at all completely very well put. And how do you know? Like tonight, our guest is going to be talking about Bigfoot, but they feel that Bigfoot is connected with UFOs and aliens. So how? Do, again, like we talked about the other night, how do you know they're not shape shifting and 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 uh, hiding what they are by maybe going into a form of something that they know it would scare the human away? And that's probably what they want to do. I know that exists. I've seen on video shape-shifting that I mentioned the other night. And I have it in my possession. I posted it, and, you know, the video I took, and it was very bizarre to see something that would look like a gray and then change its form and then look kind of look like a Bigfoot. And what was really creepy about that video was I could actually see when he was turning to look and started to have that creepy smile you could actually see the teeth, but he was talking, or it was talking to something else, so it wasn't the only thing that was there. So, you know, and, and that's one of the mysterious things. I tried to enhance that particular video, but but it's, it's so real, and you don't know who was observing me. You know, I can't really say that was a Bigfoot. I don't know something that was pretending to be Bigfoot. I'm not saying all Bigfoots are shapeshifters either, you know, but I think there's a lot of... Uh, um, there's a lot of beings that like to pretend to be something else. And I think it's, even when you start talking about the paranormal world, I mean, jumping off that cliff a little bit, you have, uh, sometimes you have spirits or maybe even evil spirits that try to pretend to be the long lost, uh, you know, deceased, uh, relatives. You really don't know. You don't even, you know, like I have said so many times, you know, what about what I saw up in the Canadian Rockies, I said, you know, it looks like a Bigfoot, but I don't know for sure what it was because I really don't know. I mean, you know, I just know what I saw and smelled. But again, I mean, I didn't sit there and try to communicate with it because it certainly didn't want to communicate with me. And 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 everything it showed was nothing but pure aggression. You know, it was. Yeah, it could have probably caught me if it wanted to, and it probably could have. And I wouldn't have not been able to defend myself. What am I going to do? Hit him over the head with a camera? I mean, but the, the whole point is that we need proof. And that's all I need.